So I was going to explain why To Pepper Butterfly was and is an overrated trash album. But Kendrick Lamar decided to drop his diss track towards Drake today called Euphoria. So this track is basically a combination of Champagne Moments, Exodus 23-1, and the story of Adidon. So this track starts off with Kendrick Lamar stealing J. Cole's flow. Listen to the track To Summer from Cole and you'll understand what I mean. So anyways, KDOT starts off the track accusing Drake of being paranoid and afraid of Kendrick Lamar's response. <laughs> Now keep in mind that Drake only retaliated because the whole entire industry started to go against Drake. You know, this this whole entire situation is kind of like how Lucifer gathered gathered up one third of the angels in heaven to try to overthrow God. This right here is a very similar situation. And Kanye literally said in a recent interview that the whole entire industry is trying to exile Drake. Furthermore, KDOT denies the Whitney Alford cheating allegations. Basically, his fiance. He basically there's allegations going around that uh, his fiance was cheating with bodyguards of his, and he's basically saying that Drake is capping about that. Moving forward, KDOT alludes to his Heart Part Four record, telling Drake, "Don't tell lies about me." And I won't tell lie and I won't tell truths about you. Then a new beat transcends and Kendrick starts making fun of Drake's Jeez, Jeez, Jeez ad lib. So furthermore, Kendrick Lamar starts to rap in his Larry Boy hysterical type flow. I find this flow very annoying because it ruins the rapper's vocal presence. I've noticed that most white kids love this rapping style. But me personally, I'm not a fan of it. Only a few rappers can pull off this rap style, like Andre 3000 and Nicki Minaj to a degree. Carrying on, Kendrick lies about bodying niggas and being a gangster, like his idol Tupac. He lied too about that shit. The truth is, Kendrick Lamar grew up in the hoods of Compton, California, but he was never an active street dude. He was just a nerd that grew up in the hood. And there's nothing wrong with that. There really isn't nothing wrong with that. In the black community, we love to glorify gangsterism and violence until somebody close to them or famous dies due to that violence. Then blacks want to come out here and play the victim card whenever something bad happens. And they're like, oh, oh, he didn't deserve to die. And RP to him and wham, 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 wham every single damn time. What did Justin Timberlake say in, on his album, uh, Future Sex Love Sound? Oh, what goes around comes around. That's what he said. Now, carrying on. Now, moving forward, Kendrick Lamar is literally stealing Drake's flow um, during this track from Once and Needs and Sticky. He's basically stealing this flow and cadence. And during my fifth listen, I caught on to that. I was like, what the fuck? This nigga stealing Drake's flow. Now, carrying on. Kendrick Lamar calls Drake a Canadian nigga, but later on contradicts his line. Moving forward, Kendrick says that he'll body Cole in Albury, aka Drake, if they're faking their respect for Kendrick. And he says that he'll, that he'll inherit the Drake and Pharrell beef for Pharrell. Then he also says that Drake needs to respond to Push first before he can battle Kendrick. Later on during the track, Kendrick openly <laughs> reveals his hatred towards Drake from the very beginning, which I already knew about. It was very obvious. You can look at very you can look at various photos and videos of Drake and KDOT and you'll notice that there was always tension between the two. Even listen to Buried Alive by Kendrick Lamar, one of Kendrick's best songs. And he basically said that he was jealous of Drake's status in the rap game. 
during that time and now currently he's still jealous of that status that Drake has he wants that Drake status so the red flags were always there now moving forward K Dot also reveals that he hates how Drake sneak this is other rappers so for number one Drake comes from the school of Jay-Z so that's where he gets it from and number two Kendrick Lamar you're literally guilty of this too because you've literally dissed other rappers in your songs too you've sneaked so basically Kendrick Lamar is a walking contradiction that's one of the reasons why I can't get on the Kendrick Lamar hype train because of shit like this moving forward Kendrick Lamar shits on Drake for sleeping with bad bitches now if I had to choose between bad bitches or a woman that can potentially leave me and take all my assets in this country and, and in Western culture because she's unhappy, I'm picking the bad hoes all day every day. Because if women are not going to offer me what I want, which is basically a woman that's a, a ride or die and stable and is not going to divorce me then I might as well just slay the pussy and go about my life. That's just me personally. Now moving forward, Kendrick starts to sound like a protesting white group of college students and basically accuses Drake of being an insecure light skin, even though most of the rappers in the music industry are shades darker than him. So that's the reason why he works with them basically. Now, if they were all white, then Drake will be working with all the white rappers. This is fucking common sense right here. So, like I said, Kendrick Lamar isn't making any sense. He's just making up shit now. So, let me ask you this question, Kendrick Lamar. Who in the hell do you want him to work with? Malcolm Moore? Eminem? Logic? Also, it's not Drake's fault that his father decided to skeet into a protected group's woman. Kendrick Lamar is basically biting Pusha T's and Rick Ross's diss track records already, basically. They already said they've already said this in their songs already. So he's basically just saying the same thing over and over and over again. We've already heard the story of Adidon and Champagne Moments, Midrick Lamar. And they're both extremely corny diss records. Now carrying on. K-Dot says that he likes singing Drake better than rapping Drake. And then Kendrick says that he's going to get P. Diddy to smack Drake again. And this is where Kendrick fucked up. Because Drake can use this against him, actually. Let me tell you why. Let me explain why. Uncoincidentally, a year before that Drake and P. Diddy situation happened, P. Diddy was actually pressing and punking around K-Dot at the 2013 VMA's party because Kendrick claimed to be the king of New York at that time and J. Cole had to stand up for Kendrick Lamar and fight Diddy for K. Dot Stewie Griffin midget ass. Now, Drake could actually use this against him in a future diss track and go into more detail about that situation that went down in 2013. Now, carrying on. Kendrick Lamar brings up Drake's fake abs and his friendship with Yachty. Again, Kendrick Lamar is literally stealing from Rick Ross's champagne moments. Moving forward, K-Dot says that he hates how Drake says nigga in his rap songs. Well, Kendrick, you just contradicted yourself. Because earlier, you dumbass, <laughs> you just called Drake a Canadian nigga. A verse ago, fucking dumbass nigga. <laughs> Moving forward. Let me ask you this question, Kendrick. How are you going to try to gatekeep another black rapper for saying nigga? And I see this in real life too. A lot of dark skinned folks hate on light skinned folks and they try to shame a light skinned person for saying nigga. Now it would be different if Drake if Drake was like you know, Justin Timberlake or Eminem or someone that was white and they were saying nigga, but 
Drake is Steph Curry black. Drake is Jamal Murray black. Drake is Jordan Love black. Drake is Mahomes black. Freaking Drake is Clay Thompson black. It amazes me how black people get riled up over the word nigga, but whenever it comes to black deadbeats, single mom culture, and little two-year-olds getting gunned down or getting hit by stray bullets, the majority the majority of niggas just say nothing about it. Or whenever it comes to black on black crime, no one says nothing and says nothing. No one says nothing or does nothing about it. And before and, and just saying something about it isn't, you know, isn't really doing anything, basically. Doing something about it, actually taking action, is actually doing something about it. And it's going to create change. But talking about it ain't going to do shit if you're not going to fucking put up points. And before integration happened, the reason why light-skinned blacks came into existence was because the dark-skinned black man chose to not protect their queens from getting taken advantage of by who the slave masters they just stood around like a bunch of cucks and i don't want to hear well the white men had advanced weapons and all this other stuff and they are more superior and everything like that no excuses our ancestors still let it happen so stop making excuses a man regardless of race I don't care if he's black, blue, green, purple, red, purple, whatever, white, he should, he's supposed to protect his wife and kids, even if that means dying for his kids. And wife. Now, if the slaves would have tried to retaliate against the slave masters and died in the process, then that would be honorable, basically. But that obviously wasn't the case. Also, most of the great revered black activists like Rosa Parks, MLK, um, Malcolm X, to name a few, were all light skins. Isn't that ironic, huh? Isn't that ironic? Kendrick is no different than the Africans that sold Africans to European colonists. Kendrick thinks that he's a shit because he's conscious. Shit. Shit. Any fucking nigga on the fucking planet can be conscious. Anybody can be fucking conscious. R shit, right now, I'm conscious. That doesn't mean I'm the shit. Also, another analogy. Kendrick's ego is no different than the bad bitch that gets validation from all the guys in her DMs. Now, moving forward. Kendrick calls Drake gay and steals Pusha T's bars from Exodus 23-1, where Push is basically exposing young money young money and cash money's you know financial situations you know conflicts that happened back then in the early to mid 2010s with wayne and and uh stunna and drake and nikki and shit you you uh kendrick cocksuckers and cole cocksuckers like to basically create double standards for certain rappers when drake uses a bar or two from someone else you call him a you call him a, a culture vulture or a biter and stuff like that. But whenever but whenever uh, Cole and Kendrick do it, you guys suck the soul out of their dicks, bro. That's how you guys are. You guys suck the soul out of their dicks. Now moving on, K Dot accuses Drake of using ghostwriters for his lyrical records. Whenever Drake already addressed this, he said he doesn't use ghostwriters for his lyrical records. He gets he says that he's actually the first one that comes up with the concepts with the, with the artist that he's gonna collaborate with, basically. That's what he said on record. You can actually watch the Rap Radar interview. And also, for his like biggest hits, he may have co-writers, which is different. He may have producers help him out with songs, or you know, co-writers help him out with songs, which there is nothing wrong with having people help you out with songs, basically, with collaborative writing. There's nothing wrong with that shit, because that can actually make or break a rapper. You know, what someone else is what, what somebody else says can actually change, you know, your trajectory of your rap career. You know, you can have this stuck up ego and shit and try to be you try to do it all, all on your own and shit, and then your music is just straight up ass, basically. Like like the majority of Kendrick Lamar's songs. Oh, I write. I write I write by myself. 
Whoop whoop de woo. You want a you want a piece of candy or something? Whoop de woo. Like, come on now, nigga. And also, Kendrick is actually dealing with a couple of uh, ghost writing allegations himself, because if you guys didn't notice, J Cole actually wrote High Power for him, and also somebody else wrote N95 for him. There's a, there's an actual reference track that was leaked with uh, the same lyrics and everything, basically. So Kendrick basically stole those lyrics, and I'm I'm pretty sure that he uh, steals, you know, flows and styles and. Um, Keem writes for Kendrick at times, basically, behind the scenes. So this whole entire Ghost Rider thing is just blown out of proportion. So finally, K-Dot calls Drake a deadbeat, but Pusher already said this in the story of Adidon, and also Kendrick says that he will shoot and kill Drake. You know, isn't that funny? Because you're the same nigga that said on the track that, isn't that funny? Because on the track, I on to pimp a butterfly the live version of the song kendrick actually breaks up a fight at his concert and speaks out against black on black crime and on this track he's doing the opposite he's actually he's actually promoting black on black crime and violence in general between black folks what a walking contradiction it's which i can't respect him because his messages and his songs don't don't hold any weight it would be better if he was just a regular pop artist now moving forward so overall i was very disappointed with this diss track the heart part for like that pay for it were way better diss tracks even though two of those songs to basically sneak this is towards drake on those records they were better and the best line on this song is the Pusha T line. The voice, the voice switch ups were whack as fuck. I actually prefer, I actually prefer um, Kendrick Lamar's, um, what's his first album? Section 80. I actually prefer Kendrick Lamar's Section 80 voice. A whole lot more better than his Larry Boy hysterical, you know, rapping style. I, I don't like it. It's annoying. And it's not like that's his natural voice. It's just he's he's basically using like robotic auto tune and shit and all this other crap. It'll be different if that was his voice, but that's not his real voice. I've already heard his real voice before. It's not even that bad. And also the beat selection, and also the beat selections for these songs, the beat changes were very disappointing as well, and mid as hell. And there were too many filler lyrics on this track too. The ones about Melly and Gunna, Sexy Red and Yachty were just a bunch of nonsense. Just keep it about Drake. So overall, I give this track a 3.5 out of 10. Push Ups by Drake was way better sonically and lyrically. I give I give Push Ups, I would say I give that, I'm going to give Push Ups a, a 8 out of 10, basically. That's a whole lot more better. I, actually, I, can, actually, I can actually replay that song. But this song right here. I'm probably not going to have this song in my rotation because it was just, you know, garbage. You know, not even mid. It was just bad. A bad song overall. And I know that I'm going to piss a lot of you Kendrick cocksuckers off, but I don't give a shit.